Hi guys, welcome back to my vlog. So today I'm gonna to be talking about Toro, how I started my Toro, how my Toro is going, just everything Toro. People are always asking me questions about Toro. So I always, I've always wanted to do a vlog about this, but it's just like, as I've been doing it, so many more things happen and it's just like, it's a lot to Toro, but it's very lucrative. So here we go. If I were watching a Toro video, I would wanna know off rip before I continue on, how much money have you made and how many cars did you have? So I've been doing Toro since July, 2021, and I have grossed 50K in one year. Um, it's now September 22, so I've made, um, I'm at almost 55K. So now I'll tell you what those cars are, how I came about getting these cars, how I have my Toro set up, and just things that I think are important if you're wanting to start Toro. I want to make this like make sense. So I have a list of things that I'm going to talk about and then I'm going to be on the app on my phone and whatever I'm looking at on my phone, I'll like put it over here so you can see what I'm looking at so we can look at it together. So first I will talk about how I got into Toro. So actually my husband introduced me to Toro. Um, he was trying to figure out how he could get a Bentley Bentayga without paying the car note because he plays basketball overseas. So he's really never here. He's only here like two, three months out of the year. And I mean, it's a Bentley, so that's expensive. I rented a car so that we could drive to Chicago to get his Bentley. So that was kind of like my first like um, experience with Toro. So we got the Bentley, brought it back, never put it on the platform. Devin, my husband was like, uh, I want to get another car. Like I want to get another car to put on Toro. So he was like looking into cars because it's once you, they run your credit, when you get a car, it doesn't show up for like a couple weeks. So if you're going to do this and you want a lot of cars, you should just get them all within the same one, two week span so that you can get the same, your credit score will be the same and you can get better deals because they don't know you have all these cars. So he was looking up cars, researching what to get. And that's the thing too with Toro, you have to make sure that you research the market that you're in, research the region because the car that works here might not work somewhere else. Like at a point, Devin was like, oh, I could get a Corvette. I'm like, a Corvette in Detroit? No, because you would only be able to drive it maybe three good four months out of the year. It's horrible weather here. No one's gonna rent a Corvette in Detroit. So that was like, no. So he ended up going to get a Dodge Journey, a 2020 Dodge Journey. So this was our first Toro car. As soon as I put the car on there, it got three bookings. It was booked for the month. And I was like, whoa, okay, that happened too fast. They were airport bookings. I was like, okay, all right, okay. And so I, he was like, hmm. So then he went out and got another car because as I said, like you should do this kind of within the same week or two so that you can get the good rates. So the next car that we got was a Chrysler 300, a 2021 Chrysler 300. Um, so we have these two cars on the platform. Then he's like, you need to go get a car. I have a car of my own that I'm not gonna ever put on Toro because I feel like for me, Toro works because I'm not putting my personal car on Toro. I don't care what happens to these cars. I got these cars for Toro, so I don't have an attachment to them. But I have a 2021 F-Pace and I'm never putting it on Toro. But he was like, you need to go get a car, try to get a car in your name. So I went and got a 2022 Chevy Trailblazer. That was easy. So then I went and got another car like a week later. He was like, you need to try to get another car. So then this was the first used car that we got. Up until this point, all the cars were brand new. So now we got a um, 2018 GMC Terrain. So those are the four cars that we have. The 2020 Dodge Journey, the 2021 Chrysler 300, the 2022 Chevy Trailblazer, and the 2018 GMC Terrain. When it comes to pricing these cars on the app, once again, this is something that you have to research. Um, I rented a car in Florida and I got a, on Toro, I got a 2018 Maserati for like $60 a day. I have all my cars on here for, my 300 is on there for like $100 a day. All the other cars are at 90, 95, 85. So it's like, if I were in Florida, I wouldn't be making as much money. So that's something to think about where you are and what cars will work in your area. Like you have to be conscious of that. Also, something else to think about is your availability. For me, I don't have a nine to five. Everything I do is on my own time. Like I'm an entrepreneur. So my hours are from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. every day. 
So I have open availability and I have it on instant booking. Instant booking is also something that is gonna get you more money because you don't have to approve it. At first I had it on, um, I had to accept each booking. But instant booking, they can just book it and it's just a buffer. Like they, you can set it to like two hours or three hours out. So if it's 10 a.m., they can't book it before 1 p.m. So I have like three hours to get the cars together or whatever for the rental. So yes, I have open availability. Sometimes I'll cut it off because, and I'll get into this later, I go out of the country for weeks at a time to see Devin or I just travel a lot. So I'm not here all the time. So I'll have it blocked off, but you can still have your hours set and just have blocks. Like it's really, you can have like a two hour block in the day. Like if I have an appointment, I'll just like block it off right there. It's very flexible, but if you work a nine to five, you're not gonna get as many rental opportunities because your hours are, you have a shorter window. Like my mother-in-law was trying to do Toro, but she's a teacher. So it's like, you wouldn't be, you would only be able to do it after five. And all of my rentals, a bulk of my rentals are between one and 6 p.m. Like that's kind of when people rent the most. So now I'm just gonna, <laughs> I hate when people say stroll. I'm gonna scroll <laughs> through the app and um just look at some things so hmm, i don't know what i want to show you first uh well i guess i'll just talk about pricing okay so i usually make between four and six thousand every month uh for me a lot of months i'm not here uh like for two weeks out of the month i have had times where i've had long-term rentals so they the car is rented out when I'm gone and when I get back, it's still rented out. Like one time I had a rental for six months. He, it was through his job. I'm pretty sure his job paid for it. He was uh, on assignment here. So I just messaged him like, hey, I'm gonna be leaving the country, you know, just wanted to let you know, let me know if you need anything. Um, but between four to six K every month, but you have to think about the fact that we finance the cars. So we have car notes. And I feel like this is the best thing to do. And I feel like a lot of people do this with Airbnb. You'll hear people say they pay the rent, but they make so much that that's really, it doesn't matter. So like these car notes, all of them are around $500. So every month we're paying like $500. We have really great insurance through AAA where it's only like $100 for each car, like 100 at 120. So that's a fee. And then also um, I have my cars they are on um, monthly subscriptions to Jack's Car Wash. So we pay $39.99 a month for unlimited car wash and to get the inside cleaned out, which is very helpful because with when it's moving and shaking, you getting them cleaned is, it would take time if I didn't have that set up where I could just go and it's free. Well, it's not free, but it's unlimited. So it just works. Um, and then now, since I do have that, I'll tell customers a lot of times, like you can get free car washes at uh, any Jags inside and out is by the license plate. And that just encourages people to get it clean before they bring it back to me. So I don't have to do it. Um, but that's a fee. And then that's really pretty much it. So I would say with the four cars, 2,000 of it is going straight to car notes, insurance, and cleaning fees. So I'm making a profit of between two to 4,000 every month, which is very ideal. And then you have to sprinkle in oil changes and just little things that might happen, but I haven't really had anything happen. I've only had two incidents where people had to um, give me money to fix something on the car, and I'll get into that a little later. Getting paid from Toro is really simple. Um, it's direct deposit and if you make more than 20k in a year you can um, claim it on your taxes Toro um, so I get paid like every couple days like every other day Toro is cashing giving me direct deposits because they don't wait until the trip is over to pay you out they make sure that you're having money coming in like every three days which is really good if you need a cash flow because it's like the money never stops which is really awesome like you don't have to wait until the end of a trip like they're gonna give you increments of it throughout the trip so that's pretty cool and then another thing uh when it comes to payouts is it's based off the insurance plan that you choose so you do get insurance 
through Toro, the cars insured under Toro, but also I have insurance on my cars. So if something were to happen, I could file a claim through Toro, but I could also take my chances and file it through my insurance company because it's like, um, it's no way for them to know what happened. You just have to be very vague. That's what I, what we learned when we were on YouTube University learning about Toro ourselves. People, I mean, how can you tell me, look, I let, some, I let my friend borrow my car and this happened, so. But I haven't had to file a claim. And if I were to, I would be trying to do it through my insurance, my personal insurance, because I have a $1,000 deductible, but with Toro, and this is me getting into the different insurance options on Toro. You can either do the 75 plan, the 80 plan, the 85 plan, or the 90 plan. So just to give you um, an idea, the 75 plan, the deductible is $250. The 90 plan, the deductible is $2,500. And this just means that either Toro's getting 75, I mean, either you're getting 75% of the money and Toro's getting 25%, or you're getting 90% of the money and Toro's getting 10%. So when we first started off, we had all of them on um, 75 because we were scared. <laughs> like who knows what's gonna happen. But as time went on, all of the cars are on 90, all of them. Because it's like, if something's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. So I, I'm in a position where I'm just ready to just pay that 25 if something does happen, 2,500. Nothing has happened um, extreme, but I also learned that if something were to happen, it would have to be extreme for you to file a claim through Toro. Because if anything happens, like if they say scratches, dents, dings, like rim scrapes, things like that, they encourage you to, to settle that with the guest on your own. So it's been two occasions, this guy hydroplaned and he scratched the rim and he ended up just PayPaling me $200. Did I get the rim fixed? No, I did because who's gonna really notice? No one. So then <laughs> the other incident in the 300, he actually was downtown parked and a ram just rammed him, like side swiped him. So uh, I was trying to figure out how to do it. Then I'm like, you know what? I think it would be best. Like Toro is really like, you should really try to do it yourself. So the guy gave me $500. He uh, cash at me 500. He was really cool. I've had, both of these guys were really just good people. So that was a good thing too. But he cash at me 500. I ended up getting it fixed and it was 600 to get it fixed. So I was like, that's cool. I'm not mad at that. But those are the only two incidents I've had. And then another thing Toro will cover is, um, well, they'll make the person pay for it. But if you, if someone has been smoking in the car, which you got to go through hell and high water to prove that someone has been smoking in the car because the scent is not enough. Like I took pictures of roaches in a car and it was past the 24 hours, which is a whole nother story. So I wasn't able to get money for that, but um, they will pay for smoking or they basically only pay for cleaning fees. So you get $150. I also was able to get a cleaning fee paid when, because you're not supposed to have pets. This girl had a, clearly had multiple dogs in the car, just all long dog white hair. I'm going to put a picture here if I can find the picture. And she, it was disgusting. So I, I had to get the car shampoo. And then it's also like when this stuff happens, you gotta be quick about getting it fixed so your car can go out. Because the only way that you won't lose is if something, if the car is in an accident, Toro will compensate you for the days that you're not able to rent it out. But otherwise you're just losing money. So it's best to just take care of it yourself. And hopefully you just get good renters who don't mess your stuff up because even still like, and that's why I said I would never rent out my personal car because it'll come back and I won't realize stuff until like two, three trips later. So I'm like, I don't know who did this. Like just when it comes to like burn marks or like a little rip in the leather or just like a little ding here, I'm not noticing it because I'm flipping the car so fast. Sometimes I'm missing it. So that's why I'm like, I would be hurt if something were to happen to my car. I just, I can't do my personal car. <laughs> Since I have done so well on Toro, I have graduated from an all-star host to now a power host. So I think that helps me too with just always being booked because um, I'm a preferred person to rent from. Like I'm gonna pop up before other people. And like if someone's calling Toro, they're gonna like link them with me. Basically what I did to get there is just good customer service. Like I've always been in customer service, so I understand customer service. So when I take on something and my name is attached to it, it's gonna be the best of the best. So I've had literally all five star reviews, like 125 star reviews. 
two one-star reviews. And the one-star reviews are obviously from the person who had the dog hair in the car who told me I was a liar. And I said, well, it's, I literally have pictures, it's evidence. And then the, <laughs> they called me a liar when I said they smoked in the car when we're, literally it was weed, crumbs, roaches, backwoods. It smelled like weed. They had like 15 air fresheners in there trying to <sighs> mask the smell. But I just really make sure that the cars are super clean, that I'm, I make sure that I respond immediately. Like I'm always on my phone making sure that if I get a message, I reply immediately. One thing I will say is that presentation is everything. I feel like I've made it to power host status because of my customer service, my presentation, just the overall vibe. Like people are paying for an experience these days, no matter what it is. So, you know, I had photo shoots done for all of my cars. Um, Toro has like certain photographers that they recommend that they work with. And so I hit up one of them in Detroit, had all of the cars um, photographed. As you can see, the Bentley was even photographed, but we didn't end up putting the Bentley on there, but we just have those photos. But I think that that kind of brings people in too, because when you're scrolling, if you've been on Toro and you look at some of the pictures, it's just like, why would you choose this picture? It's like pictures of the cup holder. Now I'm inclined to believe that the car must look trash. So presentation is everything with things like this. Like it's an app, it's all about visual. So keep that in mind too. And um, yeah, just try to be as professional as possible and it will work in your favor. What else do I do? Punctual. Being punctual goes a long way. I'm always on time, always on time. Even if I'm waiting for you, I'm there. And if I'm not on time, now what I'll do if I know that I don't want to wait or if I know I'm not going to be able to be there at that time, I'll just leave the car, which I don't necessarily recommend this because it's not locked, but I have my cars, my pickup and drop off is at um, a police station where there's like a library and a, a parks and rec center type thing. So I feel good about it and I have trackers on all my cars. So that's another thing. I would recommend putting a tracker on all of your cars. The people don't know that I have trackers on the cars. I've only had to say that twice. So if you rented from me and you're seeing this video, I didn't know exactly where you were. I act like I don't know. Like if somebody's like, I'm on my way and I see that they're not, I'll just let it fly because it's like, I'm not about to expose myself for this. But I have had to expose myself two times. Like, look, I know where the car is, so what's up? <laughs> but um, yeah, I would recommend putting trackers on the cars. Um, lost my train of thought. I hope I'm covering everything. I don't know, what else? Um, let me get my handy dandy list out. Uh, I guess that's it. I will just say that common sense is not so common. So just be aware, like people, oof, a lot of people are really off. So you just have to just be mindful of that and just give everybody grace. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. I hope that I covered everything. And if you have any questions, um, you can always just like uh, comment here and I might make another one if you want more details or if you find any of my socials, like people always message me about random things. So if you have a question, I probably will answer it. Um, and if you've made it this far and you're like, wow, her skin is beautiful. I'm also an esthetician and I have a skincare line. Um, so make sure you go to fruitfulskin.com and get you some skincare. I have a Labor Day sale going on. And if you miss the Labor Day sale, there's always free shipping with orders $75 or more. And since I've done this shameless plug, I'll just head on to another shameless plug. Um, if you're not a Marriott Bonvoy member, you should be. I travel for free a lot because of my Marriott Bonvoy rewards. So I encourage you to get a Marriott Bonvoy rewards credit card because it's life changing and we can both win. So I'm going to put the link down here for that too, just as a side note. But I hope this was helpful. And if you have any more questions, just let me know. And I really hope that your tutorial journey works out great. And I wish you the best.